Here it is, start to finish from a cabinet drawn in AutoCAD as 3D solids all the way through to manufacturing using solid sim and router sim from SimTech. I double click to open a drawing and this is a 3D solid. You can see that in the rendered view and if you select your objects just about all of those are 3D solids. Okay, So from here we select the solid sim command select all the solids we want to cut with the router. Now you can select extra stuff and it'll get filtered out with a cube limit and a maximum and minimum thickness but really you should only select what you want to use. I can go to my cut list and that's generated. That's all the parts with their uh, part name and material and quantity. Now you can just double click on one of these part names and call it something different and that will be the name that that uh, part is assigned to. Same with the material. You can double click and change materials. It is grouped objects by material there. You can also use any of the AutoCAD materials or in Inventor we take the materials directly from the Inventor. We also take the part names from Inventor. Okay, the next step will be to lay those parts out flat and we have a button that will just lay those out flat that's the real power of the command right there where the features are recognized and uh, geometry is added onto different layers. These objects are stored by a group. If you erase the solid you can see the geometry that the feature recognition has left behind. These are objects on different layers. For example, that outside is on an outside layer with the thickness. Same thing with drill holes and counter sinks and counter bores and you name it. Even horizontal holes are recognized and put on horizontal layers. So we have full six-sided feature recognition with the SolidSim software. Okay, and if I undo a couple steps, we can put it back to uh, an assembly, I think. And we'll go to isometric view of that. And there's a really nice explode command that's also part of SolidSim that uh, drags the parts drags everything apart and let me zoom and try that again uh, so display specific so there's the object moving apart and then we're going to export those as well we can reassemble it there here's an export button when you pick export it uh, creates a CSV file with the same name as the drawing. That contains, uh, it's also a folder with the same name as the drawing. That folder contains all the parts for this job. They're uh, laid out and exported individually as DWG files with these names. And they have the solid in there as well as the polylines and the circles, all the geometry on different layers. There's the side panel that I renamed. At this point, you can exit the AutoCAD, save the drawing if you like. But uh, what we're really looking for here is the CSV file that is our cut list. It's the name of the part, how many, and what material. It's a comma delimited file, name, material, quantity, and a panel size. You can also add additional information in these extra columns here for labels and choose machines, post processors. Uh, knowledge drawings, all kinds of extra information. But these three pieces, name, material, and quantity, is all we need to right-click on a CSV and cut with RouterSim. So it's one click to create the files in this folder. It's just one more to click and make the NC code and toolpaths for these parts. The nested toolpaths, the individual programs, labels, reports for each program, reports for the nest, um, Code is G-code checked for different uh, Z values if you like. We have uh, all the results are stored in different folders for you. They can go to network drives, go directly to the machine's hard drive. And uh, that's what's starting now is the RouterSim software imported that CSV file in one click, created a, a run job that knows how many parts, what material, the materials are specified in the uh, RouterSim automation and each part will uh, process based on its layers that that feature recognition created that layer creates a toolpath that's associated with it 
So here we have each part open up and RouterSim runs through the operations to create the toolpaths and to generate the NC code for that one part by itself, which is very useful. If the part moves or falls, you have the program ready to run it again. Now we also save the date and time on these parts so that if you ever have to run the job again, they do not need to be reprocessed. We have a feature called Shape Done that uh, makes for considerably less uh, cycle times here during making the jobs and making the programs if the part's already been processed. So uh, we have a way to take the 3D solids, edit just the one feature that's changed, re-output the code, only one part gets changed, one update. So here's all the individual parts popping through on the nest. Now that countertop, you know, had a big rounded corner there. Well, we've actually put a line there, and you can make a toolpath go through and do that. We also have the outside geometry being cut. So there's a, I have kind of a, a standard do it file here that takes every layer that the feature recognition creates, and it makes a toolpath for it. And uh, with router sim, it's easy to create those what's called knowledges. Here you see the nest. These nests print out to whatever printer you're connected to in AutoCAD or Windows printer. It can also be printed to a PDF file. There was two different materials in this job. There's a scrap cut that gets made. Actually, it's three materials because there was a countertop in there too. And a scrap cut gets made and um, the scrap can be saved or utilized again. You can add scraps. You make a label for the scrap. The entire process is done in just a few minutes and I can open those results and there's all my programs. I have my NC code, my nested NC code files here, I have PDF file printouts of each nest. I'm using part numbers by default, but we can put part names here. I've got a summary report of the nest that adds up a cost for the materials if you like. You can nest by yield or by price using the advanced nesting. Um, there's the program for each individual piece. Okay, there's a little run report here that has the names and the tools that were used, how many inches each tool you cut, and you can plug in tooling costs and uh, come up with actual tooling costs there. We estimate the cycle time based on variations in the tool feed rate. So we do variate the, the feed around the machine, and we come up with actual machining costs. You can plug in your material, your personal fatigue and handling times, it's a nice little report study, uh, time study done for you here for each individual part. And there's also a report for the entire job. This is our nesting yield. So there's my materials and uh, how many of each part were nested. Again, you can have part names here, be the drawing names if you like, or a combination of drawing names, part names, label fields, different things. And uh, we see we've got different yields here, and that's by the area of the parts. And there's also a tooling summary that has those exact feed rates and uh, changes in speed. So we get a very accurate cycle time because of that. We have the total number of inches. And then a summary that has our individual part cycle times as well as our uh, nested base cycle times. So Excel spreadsheet for the entire job is saved in there. And there's also labels. Ryderson comes with the Avery uh, labeling program. And you've got labels for all your parts uh, automatically as well. Remember, this came from a right click and uh, right from the model. So I didn't add any extra label information, but there's plenty of room to add additional label fields. And if we make a barcode for each sheet, you can make them for each part if you like. This is a fully customizable label program, and you can use any of the very various uh, label sizes in uh, Avery and pick and choose what information you want on those labels. It's a great program included with router sim, full sheet feed labels. Uh, also saved here is the programs for the individual parts. So each individual part is saved as a drawing. You can make changes to it. Here you can see I did not cut the horizontal uh, holes because I'm nesting these. Okay, I can make a single program that goes back and cuts the horizontal holes. I do have a dado cut here and the solid sim made the extension for us in the polyline. It extended that beyond the edge of the part so we get a full dado. And I'm using the helical lead in and the lead out on our tool path that uh, ramps the tool in and out, has an overlap, and that's for the single cut. Each individual drawing is saved as a drawing that you can edit and make changes to with already has tool paths on it. 
We also saved the nest drawings for the three different materials. And that nest drawing is uh, still has the 3D solids in there, as you can see. It laid out the nest for each material. And um, I made what's called a tool stay down nest using our advanced nesting that creates the tool stay down path where the tool just stays down and connects from part to part without lifting up. Okay, there's a built-in little overlap here. It's a programmable amount. And uh, you watch your machine cut now, it rapids from one part to the next. That turns into several hundred inches of travel that can be eliminated with the tool stay down type of cut. And because we overlap there, you won't get a bump on the part, and you can use your cutter compensation at the machine to adjust for tool wear. So this is useful for any kind of shapes. We also support common line nesting, which is more for rectangles only. And that cuts the cycle time even further if all you're cutting is rectangles and squares. So that's a tool stay down type of path. Uh, it makes your cycle times a lot shorter. All those tool paths are stored in AutoCAD. You can edit those with AutoCAD commands. You can use copy and rotate and just pick anything you want with AutoCAD and copy stuff and make additional tool paths if you like. We're using the helical entries here again. You can see the tool ramping down. Uh, even if it has to make multiple passes, we'll corkscrew that tool in, turn around, overlap, and ramp out. That's a big time saver on your machine, and it doesn't put pressure on the scrap to move. It's good for your tooling. It's great for your spindle bearings. We care about that. You should, too. It costs a lot of money to replace those things. That's the uh, all the router sim data stored in one folder that we got in two clicks from a 3D model in AutoCAD. For more information on the router sim and the solid sim products, www.sim-tech.com. We won the Challenger Award for solid sim. That was the program I showed you there that laid those parts out flat. And then it's the router sim software that actually takes them and makes the tool paths automatically. Thanks again.